Hi everybody, in this video I'm going to go over Apex Section 10.2.1 Sound. So this video is just the first part of the Apex Section. There's also going to make a second video for the second section. Okay. So the first thing we need to know about sound is how sound works. And it works because of the vibration of particles. So for example, when you're talking, the sound is propagated by particles in the air vibrating, and they make the next particles next to them vibrate, and this continues on and on, okay? And that's how sound works. So let's look at an image that shows this. So this is an example of a longitudinal wave, and these black dots represent particles. So you have your first particles start vibrating, and they bump into other air particles which start vibrating, and they bump into other air particles which start vibrating, and that's how your wave propagates. So if you are hearing a sound, these air particles are vibrating, bumping into other air particles which start vibrating, and eventually the air particles right next to your eardrum start vibrating, and that makes your eardrum vibrate, and that's how you hear sound. Now, if you look at each individual particle here, like for example, if you keep your eye on one of these red dots, you see that the particles are not moving with the wave. They're just moving back and forth. They're vibrating in place, but they're not traveling with the wave to the right. That would be the case if you had a gust of wind, right? But in sound, each particle is just moving back and forth in its own place, not traveling with the wave. Okay, so that's how sound works. I want to go over a couple properties of waves as well. So, our first property that I want to understand is how amplitude and volume relate. So if we have a wave, we can represent sound as a transverse wave, even though it's longitudinal. This wave has a amplitude. And the amplitude measures the volume of the sound wave. So if you have a higher amplitude wave, that is going to produce a louder volume. A second property is frequency. So we could have a sound wave that looks like this, and we would know that this is high frequency. You could also have a sound wave that looks like this. And this would be low frequency. So frequency is analogous to pitch in sound. So high frequency wave has a higher pitch. So if you know music, higher pitch is something like E, it's up high, okay? A low frequency wave is going to have a lower pitch, like boo, okay? Excuse my terrible singing. Higher frequency waves have a higher pitch and lower frequency waves have a lower pitch. Great. Next thing we want to talk about is interference. So in sound waves, interference can cause beats. Okay, so let's look at an example here. We could have a wave that looks like this. And then a, another wave, which is a little bit offset, that looks like this. And if you add them together, you end up with a wave that looks like this. And this is called a beat. This part here of the beat, this is because of constructive interference. And this is going to be louder, right? Because it has a higher amplitude. This part here is because of destructive interference. And this is going to produce a quieter sound, okay? So if we have 
two interacting sound waves that are slightly offset, they're going to both constructively and destructively interfere, and that's going to create a beat. Now, I want to clarify that the beat is not exactly what you're thinking about of music. It's not that, like, drum beat, like, do, do, do. It's something slightly different. You can hear it um, in music, but it's not that drum beat. It's a little bit different. Okay? When we have these two sound waves interacting, we can produce beats. Another really interesting application of interference is how noise-canceling headphones work. So if we have noise-canceling headphones... What happens is we have our headphones and there's some sort of sound waves that are coming in, right? This is coming in. Okay. And there's a little microphone that detects the sound wave and actually produces another sound wave that is the exact opposite. So where this is going down, this is gonna go up, this is gonna go down, this is gonna go up, this is gonna go down. And it produces a wave that causes destructive interference. And as a result, you hear no sound, okay? So it's pretty interesting. Um, the outside sound, there's a microphone that picks that up, it figures out what that sound wave is, and then makes an exact opposite sound wave, which will destructively interfere, so you will hear no sound from the outside. So it's a pretty cool application. Okay, the next thing we need to talk about is the speed of sound. So the speed of sound, it depends on the medium. So for example, if we have a solid, all of our particles are packed closely together. Then if you have one particle that starts moving, it's going to bump into that next particle, that's gonna make it start vibrating and the next one will start vibrating quickly. Since they're so packed together, once the first one starts vibrating, it's going to quickly make the next one start vibrating and the next one and so on. And this makes it have a faster speed of sound. Now, if we have a gas, and we remember from chemistry that in a gas, the particles are spread out, then if one particle starts vibrating, you have to wait for it to go over and hit into another particle for that to start vibrating and for that to go over and hit another particle and start vibrating. So this is going to be a slower speed, okay? So sound actually travels faster in a solid medium than it does in a gas because the particles are more packed together. Now, as a result of this, when sound waves hit a barrier between two different medium, they can reflect or refract. So sound waves reflect or refract when they meet a barrier in the medium. Okay, so let's say we have a barrier here, like this is our gas, this is the air, and this is a solid, like the floor or a wall. What can happen is your sound wave can be traveling in and it hits that barrier and it bounces back off. This is called reflection. And this is what happens when you hear an echo. So you might be saying something in a room with a high ceiling and that sound wave may be traveling down, it hits the ceiling or another wall and it bounces back and then you hear that same sound again. That's what happens in an echo. It's because that sound wave was reflected off of that barrier in the medium. Another thing that can happen is that it can refract. So let's say we have a gas here and a liquid, okay? What can happen is, is your sound wave is traveling in your gas and then it hits a barrier, it keeps traveling, but it bends, okay? This is called refraction. 
And this is what happens when, if you're in a swimming pool and someone says something in the air outside, it sounds different in the liquid. That's because the sound has bent, right? It's refracted. Okay, so this is what we need to know about sound waves. We need to first understand how they work with particles vibrating. Then we need to be able to relate the amplitude to the volume of the sound and the frequency to the pitch of the sound. We need to understand that interference can cause beats to happen. And that's also how noise canceling headphones work. And we need to understand that the speed of sound depends on the medium with solid speed of sound being faster than gas because the particles are more closely packed and that this leads to sound waves reflecting or refracting when they meet a barrier in a medium. Thank you.